Many people passed through it. It had Jewish, Christian, and Muslim communities living there in coexistence and peace. And then came the Nakba, the catastrophe. So from the very first moment in 1948, the Strip was a huge refugee camp under pressure uh, in un unbearable conditions already in 1948. Of course, things became even worse after Israel occupied it in 1967, and even worse uh, since 2007 when the uh, siege on Gaza began. And then the 17 years of siege that included four uh, bombardments of Gaza, uh, which is probably what most young people in Gaza know, since many of them are in the tw early 20s. The only reality they know is the reality of siege and four bombardments from the air, the land and the sea uh, from 2007 until today. This is ethnic cleansing which has, has turned into genocide. So from my perspective, what's happening now in Gaza is far worse than what happened in 1948. To the leaders of the world, no amount of pressure, no decision by any international forum. The same international indifference uh, that allowed the Israelis to complete uh, the ethnic cleansing in 1948 is, work, is also activated uh, today. And today it's even less forgivable than it was in 48. Because 48 there was no television, there was no internet. Unlike today, where the genocide is taking place in front of our eyes, governments of the West, of the global laws, are fully aware what goes on, and they refuse to uh, force Israel uh, to accept a ceasefire. The United States and Israel, the two major rogue states in the world. <laughs> There's no chance for any solution. Also, the two-state solution is not a solution as long as Israel is a Zionist state. So obviously, when we talk about a one state as, as a vision for the future, we understand that it has to go through the de-Zionization of Israel or the decolonization, if you want, of historical Palestine.